Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to put together another handy guide, this time on weapons. Where to find seven amazing weapons. Of course, this game is full of tons of incredible weapons, but these are seven awesome weapons you can get near the very beginning of the game in Limgrave. You won't need to go any further than that. You can simply roam the first area and uh, get some awesome weapons. So if you guys do enjoy this, you do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. If you found any cool weapons yourself that you think people should know about, let us know in the comments down below. And of course, keep it locked if you guys are enjoying the Elden Ring coverage, because we've got plenty more coming your way. So to begin with, I want to turn my attention to one of the weapons I'm using the most, which is the katana, the uchi katana. This, of course, is the weapon you begin the game with if you play as a samurai, but you can also get one yourself or get it if you want a dual wield as well. That is also an option. If you want to get one of these, what you need to do is turn your attention to the location you see on the map right now, which is the Death Touch Catacombs. If you go to the sort of like northeastern part of Limgrave, just before the bridge, then that is where it's located. Then what you want to do is when you run into the catacombs itself, you're not actually going to be going and defeating the boss. Instead, you want to follow the route that I'm going on right now. You want to run straight forward. And then when you get to the door that, of course, needs to be opened by a lever, you want to take a left. You then want to run through there and drop off the edge, turn around and go backwards and basically follow the path you see me taking right now. You're going to go and navigate through a couple of archways and you will then find a body. And when you interact with this, this will be the Uchi Katana. It's a fantastic weapon. Of course, it scales with both strength and dexterity. Or of course, if you decide to, uh, you know, change the actual war on it, you can influence that. But it also comes with the unsheath skill, which is very, very nice. You basically sheath your sword at your side and you then draw it out in this big, powerful overhead slice. Does a lot of damage and it is a fantastic move. So that is weapon number one. Moving on from there to the next weapon, Bloodhound's Fang. This is a fantastic looking curved greatsword. Of course, it comes from the Bloodhound, which are a boss you would of course have encountered in the closed network test. One of the sort of ones you can fight early on. Not a big story boss, just like a open worldy boss. It is a really cool looking weapon and it has a unique skill called Bloodhound's Finesse, where you basically slash upwards with the Bloodhound's Fang and use momentum of the strike to perform a backward somersault, but you can then follow this with a strong attack to basically step forward. It is a super cool move and uh, also one that I've died many times to on the receiving end. If you want to find this, you basically need to go and fight the Bloodhound Knight Darawil, which you can find in one of the Evergolds. Basically, you want to go to the southern part of the Limgrave map, or at least the first part of Limgrave, the one that we experienced in the Close Network Test. Go in there and you then basically need to go into the Evergold and you need to defeat the Bloodhound and once you've done that, you will get the sword. Next up to this, we have this fantastic looking greatsword. It is called the Grafted Blade Greatsword. It is just a sword of swords. It's like uh, the Game of Thrones throne, only the sword version, which is kind of crazy. It's described as a revenger's weapon. It is burdened with the oceans of anger and regret. It has a unique skill called Oath of Vengeance, where you swear an oath upon the greatsword to avenge the clan, temporarily raising all attributes for a certain duration. While the oath's effects are active, poise will also be increased. If you want to get this one, you basically need to continue south down Limgrave. You want to get to Castle Morn, and you basically just need to work your way through Castle Morn till you eventually get to the boss at the end. Again, not a sort of narrative boss, but it is still a boss regardless. To avoid spoilers, I will not show you the actual fight. I'll simply show you me walking into the zone and then the thing defeated, but defeat it and that's where you get the sword. Moving on from this, the next one, the Golden Halberd. This, of course, is a uh, surprise, surprise, Halberd-style weapon. It is big. I, of course, don't necessarily have the stats to be able to effectively wield this one, but it does come with a skill, Golden Vow, where you basically raise your armament aloft and pledge honor to the Erd Tree in battle, granting both yourself and nearby allies increased attack power and defense. This you will get simply by defeating the Tree Sentinel, which, of course, is the, uh, the roaming boss you see as soon as you come out of the door at the beginning of the game. You might not have fought it early on because it might have been a bit too strong for you, but basically, go back, defeat him and you get his weapon.
Following on from there, the next one is the uh, Reduvia, which of course is this awesome blood-looking dagger. Looks like something straight out of Soul Calibur. This also has the unique skill Reduvia Bloodblade, where you slash with the Wicked Dagger, transforming its never-drying bloodstains into airborne bloodblades that cause hemorrhaging can also be fired in rapid succession. If you want to get this one, you have a little battle ahead of you. You want to head over a little bit south of the Murkwater Catacombs. Basically, you want to go down this river here. There is actually a uh, nearer waypoint, which I discovered a little bit later on. But basically, you want to work your way down this river, and in doing so, you'll be invaded by Bloody Finger, you need to defeat him, and you get his blade. After that, for those of you guys that want to be Wolverine, you want the heavy hook claws. These are incredibly cool. They're a fist weapon, but they just look real nice. I like the animation with the attacks for this one. I also put uh, a different skill on this one. By default, it has quick step, but I put life steal fist on it so that I can basically just like steal some life when I'm using this. Plus, it looks really cool, really sort of like menacing. But anyway, this one, if you want it, you need to go to Stormvale Castle and you want to go from this waypoint here and basically work your way up the stairs, ignoring the sort of like first two enemies that will try and knock you off. And as soon as you go in, you then need to work your way around the left, avoid the big guy at the back, basically break through all the crates in the back corner, you will find these located there. And then finally, for the last one, not actually going to be a uh, location you need to do anything other than purchase it. If you go over to this location here, the isolated merchant shack, there is, surprise, surprise, a merchant here. And if you go here, you can purchase the Zweihander, which is a colossal sword. I haven't purchased it myself right now. I'm saving my runes for other things, and this is not a sword that I personally need. But if you do want a big two-handed colossal sword, then this is for you. Anyway, that's it for the time being. This little rundown on some more weapons that you can grab early on in the game that won't need you to go very far or very sort of deep into dangerous zones. So grab those, have some fun, and again, keep it locked for plenty more. If you guys want to know where you can find some awesome Ash of Wars, then click this video on screen. And again, stay tuned for more.